Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Jessica Devereaux in Baltimore. There's a new report out titled Humanity Divided, Confronting Inequality in Developing Countries. Its main thesis is that inequality is growing worldwide, and it sets out recommendations on how to tackle it. Now joining us is one of the co-authors of the report, Stephanie Seguino. She's a professor of economics at the University of Vermont and a research scholar at the Perry Institute at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Hi, Stephanie. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So, Stephanie, in your report, you discuss the growth of inequality worldwide. First of all, can you explain a bit of your process and how did you reach your conclusion? Sure. Uh, so the process focuses primarily, the, the report focuses primarily on developing countries, but also we did an analysis of developed countries as well. And the primary indicator of inequality that we use is the Gini coefficient. So that measures the, the, the um, dispersion of income, uh, household income, uh, several measures before taxes and after taxes. And we compare this to what existed in 1990 and how that Gini coefficient has changed by 2010. So Stephanie, can you speak to specific examples where you're seeing a great rise in income inequality? And, and, and why does that even matter? Sure. Uh, well, first of all, the, you know, what was interesting about the report is that there, was, there is a rise in inequality in uh, developed countries and developing countries. Uh, but there are also instances of falling inequality. So it's to suggest that actually something can be done. It's not inevitable that inequality increases during this period of time. Uh, we found that the greatest increases in inequality were primarily in the former, former so Soviet um, countries, uh, the so-called Commonwealth of Independent States, as well as in Asia. So uh, in Asia in particular, which is the most rapidly growing region, we've also seen the really stark uh, increase in inequality, a 25% increase in, in inequality measured as the Gini coefficient. Um, uh, and if we look at the population covered by the country, the developing countries in which inequality has increased, it's roughly 75% of the population in developing countries that live in countries where inequality has increased. So let's talk about those countries where we saw a decline. Um, which one specifically? Well, uh, in Latin America, something, uh, a, a fairly significant percentage, three quarters of Latin American countries have seen a decline in inequality. And one of the reasons that that is significant is that this is also a region that had very high inequality in 1990. So it's very significant that during this period in which other countries are, are, are experiencing this widening gaps, the Latin American countries have been able to overcome that, uh, or at least to some extent, they've been able to bring down those gaps to some extent. The other region of the world in which we see declining inequality is Sub-Saharan Africa. Those would not be the two regions where I would think that you would see this. Um, can you speak to, to which specific Latin American countries and which sub-Saharan countries are you talking about sure, here? Sure, uh, So you, in, in Latin America, I mean, countries like Brazil, which had very high uh, inequality, Argentina, for example, uh, some countries did not see a decline, such as Chile, for example. Um, so in, in, uh, in um, sub-Saharan Africa, uh, it was just really just a, a wide variety of countries had uh, uh, an increase in any uh, I'm sorry a decrease in inequality um, and I think you know the difference between the two the reasons that inequality fell in these two regions differed in in Latin America the reason the the decline in inequality was largely policy driven it was largely a function of policies like raising the minimum wage uh, and conditional cash transfer programs that targeted the poor and particularly affected women uh, and female-headed households. In Sub-Saharan Africa, a lot of it had to, has to do with the commodity boom that results from the growth of China and the increased demand for these minerals and so forth that are produced in Sub-Saharan Africa that's, whose prices have been driven up because of the strong demand from China. Okay, and there are some that would argue, Stephanie, that growing inequality is natural in a capitalistic society. So how do you respond to those that say reform will never address really the structural nature of inequality? 
Well, I think that that's true, that capitalism is a system that produces and reproduces inequality. And that's the reason that deregulation and a reduced role of the state, which is what we've observed over the last 20 years, is, is, has contributed to the growth of inequality. If you look at the period between 1929 and roughly 1973 in Europe and the United, and the United States, what we've seen is declining inequality. And that largely had to do with a, a, a labor uh, a corporate uh, compact. Uh, it had to do with regulation of businesses that made them accountable to the local communities in which they work. And, and the rules limited their bargaining power. But what's happened since 1973 really is that although workers are immobile, firms are free to roam the globe for places to produce that produce the highest profits or they're able to outsource. And that's really, you know, in my view, the crux of what has happened, along with financial deregulation that's caused a whole host of other problems. And so I, there's, there's nothing inevitable about inequality. Um, I would say maybe it is inevitable that you have inequality if you have unregulated capitalism, but if you're willing to regulate it, if you're willing to intervene in, in, uh, in targeted ways, then inequality can be reduced. All right, Stephanie Seguino, Professor of Economics at the University of Vermont. Thank you for your very, very interesting report. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.